Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Doc Sadler, presented by Bank Corp South. Golden Eagles have just uh, come off the road. They're getting ready to finally get back into action at Reed Green Coliseum, where they're going to take on Middle Tennessee and UAB. But the road for the Golden Eagles this past week saw them play a couple of ball games. The Golden Eagles went out to Rice to take on the Rice Owls, and on Saturday in Denton, Texas, to take on the Mean Green of North Texas. And uh, Doc, uh, two close ball games, two ball games that could have went either way for the Golden Eagles. Give us your thoughts on, on first, I guess, the Rice Owl ball game. Well, you know, John, coming back off of the loss at uh, Louisiana Tech, uh, knowing that we're going on the road again, uh, really wanting to improve our intensity and enthusiasm and, and really just, uh, just playing hard. And I thought uh, against Rice, we may have played the first half about as well as we played all season and scored 42 points in the first half and was really executing really well, doing all the things that you'd like to do. In the second half, uh, I really thought we played just as hard and, and, and as good. We just couldn't get a shot to go in the basket. And the thing that's really, uh, you know, been frustrating, I think, for the most part for our team this year is uh, we need to get to the free throw line more and, and we need to make the free throws when we get there. And, in the Rice ball game, we just didn't get to the free throw line enough and got outscored by 13 points against them. But, you know, as far as the effort, uh, I thought the first half we played as well as we played all season uh, for the whole ball game. I thought we gave unbelievable effort uh, up to the very end. And so uh, that part of it I was excited about, happy. Uh, you know, sometimes the shots are not going to go in. And, and in, in our players' uh, case, uh, I really thought they were getting great shots, getting shots that you could not ask for any better shots, but it just would not go in the basket. And, uh, you know, so therefore we came up a little bit short against those guys. I know if you've told me uh, several times, you think right now you're probably playing defensively about as, as well as you could play as you, you hold Rice fairly uh, limited number of points and then the same thing in that Saturday ball game against North Texas. Well, I, I, I'm not for sure that this isn't the best defensive team. And, uh, you know, in both of the games uh, that we just played, you hold the teams to 40 percent or a little under uh, from field goal percentage defense. You don't really go by it much by points because both teams uh, score a lot of points, even though, uh, you know, our field goal percentage defense was really, really good. Uh, we also hold we, we held, uh, you know, uh, Rice to 10 to 12 points under their average and almost 20 points under North Texas's average. So the defensive end is really, really good. Uh, the biggest key is we've got to find a way to continue to get to the free throw line more and make the free throws that we get there. If we do that, we win both of those games. But, uh, you know, uh, as Dandy Don would say, if it's and butts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. But uh, Christmas has passed us by, so now we need to, to move forward. North Texas ball game, uh, one that went right down to the wire. Uh, you fell behind uh, in the second half, I think 10 or 11, 12 points, something like that. Made a great comeback, really kept them off the scoreboard about the last five minutes of the ball game until they got that bucket that turned out to be the game winner. Well, I think before the game winning basket, uh, their last field goal was with 539 to go in the game. And uh, we, uh, again, the last. Uh, five and a half minutes was about as good as you can play, limiting the, the, them to one shot, first uh, shot defense really, really good. And, you know, took the lead and, and had the lead uh, with, you know, down to the very few seconds to go in the game. And, uh, you know, would you have liked to have maybe got a little better shot? But uh, I think that's always the case. But we put it in Tyree's hand. He got it, you know, eight feet from the basket. It just did not go in the ba basket. So. Uh, again, just like the Rice game, defensively, I thought uh, we played as well as we can play. Our, our effort was unbelievable. Uh, every loose ball we was on the floor to get. Uh, so, uh, you know, even though we're 0-3, you know, and over the last six ball games, you know, you look at the only ball game that you kind of frustrated with would have been the Louisiana Tech game. Other than that, uh, I'm not for sure we could be playing any better than what we're playing. So hopefully. Uh, getting back home after this, you know, six-game road trip, uh, maybe we'll get some luck on our own baskets here at uh, Reed Green on Thursday night. All right, Doc's going to rejoin us in just a bit. We'll talk about what's coming up for the Golden Eagles against Middle Tennessee and UAB. But sit back down and enjoy our features this week. Edwards. 
going to work one on one. Drive inside, fall away jumper in the lane, good again. Feels like I've been here forever. The last four years, when I first came, it was just like a new experience. So I was just trying to figure out things and just see where I can go with my career. But now it's just like helping the young guys just not make the same mistakes I did. Uh, for me, the biggest thing I talk to the young guys about is is even when you feel like you're tired, you still have to get in the gym and, and get your work in. Because I know I used to sleep a lot. I always felt like I needed a nap, but now it's like I got more energy because I'm used to it. So I just tell those guys to just, just get in the gym and work. Uh, playing a lot of minutes is it's kind of like me. I don't like being on the bench. Like whenever coach takes me out, I like look at him like, like what are you doing, coach? Like I'm good, but I know I need a break every now and then, but. Just the hardest thing is doing it every night. Cause like we play Thursday, Saturday at conference. So that Saturday is, is really tough when you just play 38 minutes. Uh, when I first come in the gym, I'm gonna do a little bit of ball handling, not much. And I'm gonna do some form shooting, start close to the basket. And I'm gonna work my way out. Probably do a little conditioning shooting drill. Uh, warm up on my free throws, probably make 10. And then whatever focus I have that day, I try to come in with a new focus, whether it be threes or like working on my mid-range jumper, which I love. And then just focus, I f try to find something to focus on each and every workout. Yeah, when I first came, I thought I thought it was gonna be the best, the best ever, but I didn't, I didn't get to that before. But yeah, but when I got here, I seen how hard it was and, and I kind of took a step back, but sometimes you need to do that, take two steps forward, three steps forward, but yeah, I definitely felt like I was I was going to be a great player. Uh, for this team, I think the, the biggest thing is focus. Uh, we're a playful team. We like to have fun, but it's not, it's not always about fun. You have to be focused. You have to be ready. And that's our biggest problem, is being focused. The Doc's the type of coach that if you know what you're doing, he's going to be the nicest guy ever. But if, if he has to reiterate stuff and then keep telling you stuff over and over, he's gonna seem like a mean guy. But once you get it, once he knows that you know what you're doing, he's gonna give you your freedom that you need to be a good player. Uh, I'm a liberal studies major in uh, interdisciplinary studies. My focus is Spanish. I don't know how I chose that, but it's Spanish. <laughs> and I got one more semester left, but I think I'm gonna do, when I'm done, I'm gonna try to get my master's and focus on some coaching, uh, staying close to the game of basketball. Uh, to wear the black and gold is like tradition, just every night just representing Southern Miss and putting on the show for the fans. I play soccer, softball, and basketball. And um, I think I got to probably 11th grade, and I finally realized that um, I was missing out on like AAU tournaments and like the big tournaments that people normally scout you at. And uh, I let go of soccer in ninth grade because it just wasn't for me. I was too tired to run up and down. And then uh, I was actually pretty good in softball, but um, I had to make the choice which one I wanted to like pursue my career in, and it was um, it was basketball. So. It was actually tough, my whole recruiting process, because uh, I had a couple schools that was recruiting me since like eighth grade. And uh, Coach Manila came a little late. She came probably, my, she came, my, she was always recruiting me, but she didn't offer me to probably gain six until my senior year. But um, I think it was more just like me wanting to stay home and, uh, you know, change a program. Like I knew Southern Miss was good, like in the previous years, and I know they had like rock bottom. So it was about me coming to a program making a difference. Like I wanted to make a difference in a program and I think I could do that. I had a great chance of doing it here at Southern Miss. My teammates probably, I'll tell you this, um, probably outside of basketball, I'm sitting in the living room playing 2K, playing the PS4. Um, I like to shop, so I'd be at the mall a lot of times on my off time, on my off days. Yeah, and other than that, uh, me and Kelsey, we go rock climbing every now and then in the pain center just to be, have fun and hang out. So yeah, I'm a pretty chill person. I'm currently studying communications with a minor in coaching. 
And I do want to uh, pursue my basketball career, not in a Spanish-speaking country like me, but uh, one of my, my goals, I either want to go to um, China or to uh, China or Europe somewhere, you know, really prefer China though, because I just feel like it's cool over there. And everything's cheaper over there too. So I would love to go to China and uh, pursue my career in basketball. I want to continue, of course. Um, when basketball is over, I, I definitely want to still be a part of a team, you know, either whether that's coaching or um, whatever it may be, I want to be a part of a, like a team atmosphere, like where I'm working with players and social things like that. I wouldn't mind coaching though. Definitely want to coach, coach a team, not a high school team, no. Like college, probably. what type of coach I would be. I'd probably be a mixture. i will be a, a yelling coach and teaching at the same time to get my point across. Probably like Coach McNeilis, probably. But she does a great job with us because she can yell at us and then coach us up. And I feel like that's the best way to be, you roughing us up, then still, you know, tell us what we need to do and, you know, tell us that we're still doing good, you know. And I think I like that about her. Like, even when she kicks our tail, she turn around and tell us, hey, you can do this, you can make this shot, like, you know, just do what you do best. When uh, the younger kids come to the game and they uh, actually take a picture with me and tell me how good I did, even when I did bad, I just look at it like, wow, somebody's always watching me. Like, and this person still think I did good when I know I played bad. So just to have like the younger ones look up to you, it, it means the world to me because I have a little niece who looks up to me too. Been thinking about it since I was a kid. Mom would be so proud. If I could do it for a living. Using my mom's recipes to open up a cupcake shop. For my daughter to go to vet school. Singing karaoke in all 50 states. Captain in my own shrimp boat. Tell us what you dream about. With the right loan or savings plan, we can make it a reality, no matter how crazy. That's right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Keeping you within reach of what matters most. We're Bancorp South, and we're right where you are. My relationship with uh, Doc Sadler started uh, back at Texas Tech, uh, back in uh, whew, 19, uh, 1991, uh, my senior year. And uh, uh, he joined uh, Coach Dickey, uh, who took over the program my senior year. And uh, you know, the funny thing is, we didn't hit it off great uh, to begin with. Uh, uh, Doc came in with a lot of fire. Uh, and uh, no one knew who he was, and uh, uh, he still has that passion for the game to this day. But uh, we grew uh, uh, to uh, really uh, enjoy our time together, working together, uh, uh, had a lot of respect for him, and that continued on through the years. And uh, as uh, time moved on, and Doc, uh, uh, his career, UTEP and Nebraska, and then ultimately I got into uh, the uh, coaching business um, we would see each other on the road, we stayed in touch, so on and so forth, and uh, it just kind of grew from there. Uh, you know, growing up, you know, my family is a football family. Um, growing up in San Diego, uh, San Diego is a tremendous baseball, football town. Uh, believe it or not, there's four Heisman Trophy winners basically in the neighborhood I grew up in. So football was the first sport, uh, but uh, when uh, we moved to Richmond, Virginia, fifth through ninth grade for me. That's when basketball, I was really introduced to the game uh, and uh, took a liking to it and, and it just stuck with me from there. When my uh, career ended at Texas Tech, uh, you know, I knew that playing professionally wasn't in the cards for me, um, but I was uh, fortunate to uh, put my degree to use. Uh, and I had an interest in getting into pharmaceutical sales uh, Coach Dickey actually helped begin that process. Uh, it took a few years, but ultimately it happened. Uh, and I did that for six, seven years, uh, but ended up uh, realizing that uh, I enjoyed working with 
uh, young men and teaching the game of basketball and teaching life lessons more than I did uh, trying to get doctors to prescribe medication. Uh, so uh, I ended up uh, transitioning into collegiate basketball. Uh, you know, my, my time in Cleveland was uh, incredible, um, you know, to, have, to be hired to, to, to work with uh, my former teammate, Mike Brown, who was the head coach, uh, but to see behind the curtain in every aspect of it, uh, from the front office side to the player side, coaching, player development, uh, summer league, everything. Uh, it was a unique experience. Uh, boy, those guys are really good. That's what you learn. It doesn't take very long to see. Uh, you're talking about 350 of the best players in the world. Uh, so, so many lessons with that, but uh, you know, as talented as, as they are, uh, I, I'm not sure that most collegiate athletes understand how hard uh, those guys work and how hard it is to keep one of those 350 jobs. Well, I tell you, what I enjoy most about being here uh, is the family atmosphere that Stocks created. Um, building a culture, um, getting back to the winning ways of the Southern Miss tradition. Really enjoyed that. Uh, just being here in the South, uh, it's new. I'm a California guy, um, you know, born and raised, but, and uh, spent a little time in Ohio, but this is my first experience in the South. Uh, the people are extremely friendly, uh, inviting, and uh, my family and I have really enjoyed it. You know, I'm not able to go out on the road and recruit. Uh, or do on the floor coaching, uh, but uh, I'm able to assist him. And uh, you, you know, it's, it's truly, truly a blessing for me. I'm very fortunate to be able to sit in his office every day and watch film with him uh, and to pick his brain. Uh, every now and again, he, you know, he asks uh, me about my opinions on things, but uh, I bounce around from Coach Shield's office to Coach Spoon's office, I mean, all the way down to, you know, uh, Omar Thomas and Director of Operations who does a great job, to Jeremy Tocovi, the uh, GA, uh, just to see how things are done on a day-to-day -day basis and what makes this thing work. Well, we're hoping that the winning that we have done and the, the records that we have set is going to hope is going to uh, benefit us in recruiting. Uh, it's going to give a new energy to the kids coming in for each year. Before we had no uh, no expectation and we had no idea. I don't think the kids really knew how good they were. And now that we've uh, you know had a lot of success, they're they're uh, they really are going to be excited about the new year coming up and, and they're already talking about hey we're gonna win this and win that so that's 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 good uh, uh, it's a good positive energy for us when we first started the track and field program uh, the summer of 2014 we were just trying to get the best athletes that we could we could find didn't matter what event area now we've, we've got a balanced program, so we always want to be good in the sprints, we want to be good in the distance events, we want to have good throwers and jumpers. So if we have a down meet in any of these event areas, we're still going to be picked up by another event area. So uh, we're never going to have a bad season uh, with the recruiting that we've done and having a balanced team. We're always going to be, we're always going to have a good team, uh, no matter if we have a, a deficiency in one event area or not. Conference USA as a track and field conference is very, it's very diverse. You're going to have a lot of uh, excellent teams. You've got Hall of Fame coaches spread out all throughout the conference. Uh, we, we represent a lot of different areas of the country. And you're going to see a lot of foreign athletes, uh, which really uh, enhances the, the competition. Uh, you're going to see some of the best athletes in, in some of the different regions of, uh, of our country. So, but it really is a tough conference. And I think it's not for the, it definitely is not for the meek and timid, for sure. Our schedule is one that's gonna allow us to see some of the best competition in the country. We're gonna compete against the SEC and the Big 12 and the Pac-10 and, and you name it, we're gonna see them and, and we're gonna go up against them and beat them. 
Uh, but we do have two very good home competitions, the last weekend in March and the last weekend in April, and we'll have about 15 teams come to each of those meets, and, and that's a great chance for our fans to come out and watch our, our athletes compete. McKinley West comes to mind when we talk about amazing athletes. When you have anyone that has three All-American awards in one track meet, that's, that's pretty stellar. You just don't get that uh, at, at many schools or, or that's a coach's dream, basically. Um, he was uh, he was fabulous. One of the fastest guys that's ever set foot on this campus. Uh, you know, I'm biased. I think he is the fastest person that's ever been here. Uh, coach Marshall Bell might have, or uh, or Coach Wayne Williams, they might have issues with me, but uh, definitely is a, a, a phenomenal athlete. Um, he's going to be backed up by uh, Chedlin Seguis, who's an academic All-American, as well as one of the faster returners in our conference. And then on the women's side, you know, we have a, a stellar javelin thrower in Callie Jones coming back. Um, and that's, she's going to be exciting to watch her develop. She was just a freshman at the NCAA Championships. Our philosophy for the track program, it's always, it's ever-changing depending on our circumstances. Uh, depending on the, the people we have on our team, uh, the resources we have, but uh, we want to have the, uh, the best recruiting classes that we can have uh, each year. We're going to do a great job coaching. I don't think there's any secrets there, uh, but recruiting is what's going to put us up over the top and help us to maintain our level of success that we've had so far. So uh, that the philosophy is just recruit like crazy. And we're back on Southern Miss Sports today with the coach Doc Sadler and the Eagles now are turning their attention to their first two Conference USA home games of this 2018-2019 uh, season. We'll talk about those in a minute. But Doc, we also just saw a feature too on Bryant Moore, who's a new uh, part of your staff here at uh, Southern Miss. He's a, a volunteer. He's the uh, executive assistant, I guess is the correct title, to the head coach. Well, Bryant, uh, I've been fortunate to know Bryant uh, since the early 90s when I coached him at, uh, at Texas Tech and uh, he was a great point guard and uh, you know helped us get, uh, get, get, get that program turned around out there and you know then he went into private business and then he got back into coaching has been uh, you know a very successful story uh, you know not only coached in uh, college but also in the NBA and uh, uh, he came and joined uh, our staff this year and and it's just that he and I can sit around and talk and we can visit about different situations. And it's nice to have that on our staff, uh, you know. So uh, he's done an unbelievable job. Uh, you know, I wish, I wish that, uh, you know, we could have gotten together earlier in our career because uh, I've been the one that's missed out on, on, on all the knowledge that he has. Uh, and uh, it's, been a, it's been a great, great year so far. Uh, within the hour or so, we're going to tip off at Reed Green Coliseum against uh, Middle Tennessee. They've got a new coach this year. They lost some outstanding players. They struggled a little bit, but it's still a very talented Middle Tennessee ball club. Well, they are. Uh, you know, a team that won the league a year ago, returning three starters. They're a, they're a good basketball team, and, you know, I've not uh, – I uh, haven't had the opportunity to, to, to sit down and talk to Coach about his team. You know, I will after the game, but watching him on tape, he's going to do a great job. Their team's good. Uh, they're going to be tough to score against. But I do think our team has had some good practices this week, and uh, we're looking forward to the game here in, in just a minute. Be nice to be back in Reed Green Coliseum, and then again on Saturday, uh, the Blazers of UAB—they're a team that battled for the conference uh, title a year ago, and uh, that's another talented team. And uh, they like to get up and down the floor and run and shoot the basketball. Well, they've uh, they've had a good program now for a long time, and they're one of the teams that's been in, in Conference USA for a while, and. Uh, you know, all the way back to, to Gene Bartow days, uh, UAB has, has had a good basketball program, and uh, that's what they've got again this year. You know, they played two really good games last week, and, uh, you know, we're going to look forward to playing them on, uh, on, on Saturday. They're at Louisiana Tech tonight. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's good to be having uh, a home game, as you mentioned here. 
and then uh, be home again on Saturday. So just need people to come out and watch these kids play. Doc, what are you looking forward to out of your ball club that you finally get home? This is that you're just coming off. Well, it'll be 30 days between home games at Regreen Coliseum for the Golden Eagles. Six games over a 30-day period on the road. Now that you're back home, what are you looking forward to seeing out of your guys? Well, I hope uh, I hope we continue to play the way we've been playing. Uh, we, we're playing as good as we can play. I just want us to to, to relax, make some shots, uh, you know, go to the free throw line and, and shoot the basketball. Uh, you know, first and foremost, get there. But once we get there, let's 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 finish the play. Get uh, get some free throws. Get some free points. Uh, and if we do that, uh, we're going to be in good shape down the road and and have a chance to have a really good basketball team. All right, Doc. Thanks for the visit. We always enjoy visiting with you, talking Golden Eagle basketball each week. So uh, best of luck. Let's go get a couple of wins at home this week. Hey, thank you, John. All right, Doc Sadler and the Golden Eagles coming up in just a bit. The Blue Raiders of Middle Tennessee and the Golden Eagles at Reed Green Coliseum on Saturday. It's the Blazers of UAB. Don't forget on Monday we're at Georgia Blue for the Golden Eagle Hotline. We sit around, we talk a little Golden Eagle basketball. That'll do it this week. Have a great week, everybody. See you next time. Another inside look into Golden Eagle basketball. Been thinking about it since I was a kid. Mom would be so proud. If I could do it for a living. Using my mom's recipes to open up a cupcake shop. For my daughter to go to vet school. Singing karaoke in all 50 states. Captain in my own shrimp boat. Tell us what you dream about. With the right loan or savings plan, we can make it a reality, no matter how crazy. That's right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Keeping you within reach of what matters most. We're Bancorp South, and we're right where you are. You got me falling hard, sweet baby. You got me falling hard for you. It's you. I felt this way before, you know it's you. It's you. You got me more and more. Oh, you got me falling hard. Hey, Southern Miss fans, it's Toby Barker, mayor of Hattiesburg. Mickey Spagnola once wrote, if you're going to war and you get to choose first, choose Southern Mississippi. Always choose Southern Mississippi. Don't fight Southern Mississippi because no matter how hard you fight, those folks will fight harder. His words capture the character of our institution and our city. We here in Hattiesburg are writing a new story, one where we rise to our challenges with great excitement, one where we push our city to reach its potential, and most importantly, one where there's real partnership between the University of Southern Mississippi and the city of Hattiesburg. Southern Miss is vital to our city's success, from the quality of life it provides through athletics and the arts to the talent it cultivates in the classroom. We share a common destiny. Hattiesburg is proud to be Mississippi's college city, and we hope as we go forward, you'll join us in supporting our Golden Eagles this season as they go to the top.